Hi guys, it's Kara at mystictwist.com and I'm happy to report that I have made it home from my Tesla road trip and I could not be happier. I am in the Pacific Northwest in Washington State, USA and as you can see it is just unbelievably gorgeous. Truly an amazing experience. So. I'm in the mood for some magic. <laughs> so I wanted to share this video today about how you can do super simple magic pretty much anywhere you are uh, with very simple tools. So everything I've learned in this video is from Inelia Benz. You can check out her website listed in the description. She is my teacher and mentor and this particular magical spell and exercise that she taught me uh, has been so incredibly effective in my life so I wanted to share it with you so that you can start to add a mystic twist to your life. So one thing to keep in mind when you're doing magic as always is to have a very clear specific intent. Now general rule of thumb for operating with good mystical etiquette and in a high frequency way is to only conduct spells or send out intent that has to do with you and your personal life, okay? So don't cast any spells that might impact other people or their lives because quite frankly, you don't know what's best for them. Okay? Only their higher self knows what's best for them and when you start working with magic on other people, you infringe on their free will. So unless someone that you are doing a spell with is with you, present, you're doing it together and they have given you their full permission to work together on this spell, then I would say it's not a good idea to conduct any magic on anyone else. So in general, keep it to yourself your life and what you want to manifest or create for yourself, okay? So now that we have that disclaimer uh, away, I want to talk a little bit about how we're going to conduct this spell. So we are going to do some edge magic. Really exciting, really powerful, really simple. So what exactly is edge magic? Well, it's pretty simple. You conduct magic on an edge or you cast a spell on an edge. Now, what do I mean by an edge? In this case, uh, when we're talking about edge magic, it can be an edge to almost anything, but the bigger the edge, the more powerful it can be. So for example, here on the Olympic Peninsula, what you see behind me is Canada. So that is uh, Vancouver Island. And on this side, I'm in the US. <laughs> So one edge that we can think about here today where I am is the edge between the nations of the United States and Canada. I'm also at the edge of the ocean and where the land meets the ocean. So, you know, a beach is a very powerful edge. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but behind me <laughs> is actually a river as well. So that's where um, the rivers or the water from the land also come and meet the ocean in a river delta and also let's see I guess depending on the time of day you could also have an edge if it was sunset or sunrise or even I'm um, thinking of the moon cycles it could be on an edge too let's say like just before a full moon or just before a new moon that could also be considered an edge so why are edges useful for magic? Well, basically it's because edges are where the veils of reality are pretty thin. So since we have a physical manifestation behind me of the ocean as well as the earth coming together, those two realities in a lot of ways are clashing. And it's neither here nor there. So I'm at the edge of the space and I'm not in the ocean. I'm not necessarily on the land. I'm actually kind of in between. So when we have an edge, what we can do is we can send our intent 
uh, from that edge and since it's a, the veil is thin between realities, that edge will travel far. Uh, it will break through the illusion of solidity in our reality. Now, with that uh, background, I want to show you how we're actually going to conduct this spell. Okay, for this spell, we are going to need a tool to draw a sigil in the sand. And what we're going to do is infuse that sigil or an image of power with our intent that we want to manifest. And we're going to have the ocean take it away. So it's literally going to be dissolved into this edge and it will be integrated into the broader collective awareness of the ocean or at least what the ocean symbolizes here on Gaia. So uh, I'm going to use a piece of driftwood to draw my sigil. Now you could use anything, you could use a rock if you wanted. I've just found that using a stick or a piece of driftwood is easier. And for my sigil, I am going to draw a symbol that represents to me that I will express my highest frequency intent at all times while incarnated on this planet in this lifetime. In other words, the goal behind the spell is I don't want to engage in any low frequency indulgences and I only want to express high frequency at all times while living on this planet. So in order to do that, you know, the sigil doesn't need to be complicated. You don't need complex sacred geometry or, you know, complicated symbols. Uh, so all I'm going to do to represent this is to draw the letter H, F, to represent high frequency. And I'm going to draw a circle around the HF to symbolize my full intent, the unbreakable intent, that I will express my highest frequency at all times while engaged on this planet. Now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna wait for the ocean waves to take away the sigil. Now, one really cool thing uh, to think about is the faster the ocean takes away a symbol or a sigil, the faster it's going to come true. So that's super awesome. Now it's important not to walk away from your sigil. If the ocean doesn't take it away or um, if it's not happening fast enough for you, that's actually a pretty good indication of it could be a firewall or a limitation. So as you can see here, I've only got my sigil halfway, not even, partially taken away by the ocean. So not only is it good mystical etiquette to not leave a spell halfway done, <laughs> right? But if you do do that, it can potentially be hijacked and lead to misfortune. So let's not do that. <laughs> so we're just going to wait until the sigil is completely dissolved and taken by the ocean. And while I'm waiting, what I'm imagining is infusing the letters H and F with high frequency intent that I want to express in my life my highest potential and only engage in high frequency interactions. And I'm just infusing the sigil with that intent the more I look at it. And also, you can do that by when you, you're literally drawing the letters. You can also infuse those letters with the energy behind them and wait for uh, that intent to be taken by the ocean. So what that felt like to me just then, when I saw the letters disappear, it felt as if that energy in my singular expression 
through the edge was being dissolved into this broader awareness on Gaia and the human collective. I, I could almost feel it in my solar plexus. It was really amazing. So if you don't have access to an edge like a beach or, you know, river, what you can do is you can draw your sigil on a piece of paper and burn it. Now make sure you're always practicing fire safety procedures when doing this type of edge spell. But just as we did here, draw the symbol, infuse that sigil with intent while you're drawing it. And then as you're burning it, as the fire is transmuting or transforming that paper into ash and smoke, imagine that intent going into the broader collective awareness through air because we all need air to breathe and we are all connected through the atmosphere on this planet. So that's another way that you can infuse that intent into uh, a broader awareness level if you don't have access to water. So if you've enjoyed this video, I suggest you check out my website uh, where you can find my blog and subscribe to my newsletter because I share a lot of mystic twists in my newsletter that you won't get anywhere else. And be sure to hit subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. You'll see a lot more videos like this in the incoming weeks now that I'm back in the Pacific Northwest. So I will see you guys next time.